talk. Next, we have Daniel Anderson, who will be telling us about SVIS and our package for effect size visualizations. All right. Thanks. So, um, this is, I work, I want to give a little bit of background first. I work in educational research at the University of Oregon. And so we do a lot, uh, or I work with people a lot that are doing experimental designs and things like that. So we're looking at effect sizes a lot. So that's um, sort of where this package came from. Um, but then there's some sort of challenges within education anyway in terms of uh, how people are looking at effect sizes. So that's where this comes from. And is there a keyboard here? Yes, okay, there we go. All right, got it. All right, so generally uh, um, effect sizes are defined primarily by mean differences. So the two of the more popular ones are Cohen's D and Hedges G. And these are variants of basically the same thing. Hedges G has a small population um, correction for small sample size, basically. But particularly when you are in non-experimental designs, um, you might want to look at the differences between two distributions at a different point in the scale. So maybe you don't want to look at the means, maybe you want to look at the 75th percentile of each of those distributions or something li like that. Um, also, even within experimental designs, depending on the actual shape of each dis distribution, the magnitude of the effect, the magnitude of the differences between the groups can really depend on the location of the scale. So it might be one size at the mean, and it might actually be a different size at a dif different point in the distributions. So, oh, my equations are not showing up for some reason. Um, so this is, you can kind of imagine what this might actually look like. Uh, on, the, on the left, um, you sort of have uh, Cohen's D e equation, and what this is really, what I'm really trying to emphasize here is that um, the numerator is the difference between the means on those two groups. And then that's divided by the pooled standard deviation between the two groups. Hedges G is just a transformation of Cohen's D, like I said, for that small population sample size correction. So one of the things, at least in educational research, that people have been doing is when they're interested in group differences at other points in the scale, they've been um, basically making a cut point on the scale. So, you know, here's 150 on, on the scale. And then they'll look at the differences between those two groups in, the, in terms of the percentage that are scoring above that cut point. So that's, that's what we have on the left here. And this is, a, is actually really problematic because then it really, really depends on scale location. Um, so at one point, it might look like a really big difference between the groups. And at a different point, it might look like there's no difference. So Andrew Ho and colleagues proposed this one on the right, which is the transformation of that, where you're basically just taking those probabilities and transforming them into normal standard deviation units. And this works pretty good, um, assuming both distributions are normally distributed. But another thing, which also Andrew Ho and his colleagues have worked on, is, um, is looking at the empirical cumulative distribution functions. So here's an example where I have two groups, and again, because I work in educational research, that's where all my examples are going to be coming from, where the blue line represents students who are in special education, and the, the red line represents general ed students. So I've just picked a random point here, 190 on this scale, and you can see for non-SPED students, you have about 29% of the students are scoring below that point where 65% of the special ed students are scoring below that point. So then you get the calculation there for the, um, the percentage above the cut sort of effect size metric. And you could transform that, of course, to standard deviation units. On the right, though, what we've done is we've taken these two empirical cumulative distribution functions and we've sort of mapped them together. So now the non-SPED group is represented by the x-axis and the special education group is represented by the y-axis. So that same point, um, of 190 is represented by one of those points on that curve. And so the overall effect size is really represented by the area under that curve. And that, that diagonal line represents sort of a reference line where if these two groups, if there, wa if there was no difference in the achievement between these two groups, then they would fall right on the reference line. So here we have a pretty big difference between the groups, which we would expect because it's special education and non-special education students. 
So as I mentioned, you can calculate the area under the curve. In this case, it's 0.73. And this has some really nice properties in terms of just interpretation, because now you can, what this AUC value corresponds to is the probability that a randomly selected student in the x-axis from the x-axis group would score above a, a, student, a randomly selected student on the y-axis. So in this case, we've got a 73% chance that a randomly selected general education student would be scoring above a special education student, randomly selected, right? But part of the problem with that is in terms of going back to effect sizes, again, we tend to think of these things in terms of standard deviation units. So that area under the curve has some really nice properties in terms of its scale and variant and its non-parametric and all of these nice things. And so this is sort of going backwards in a little bit, in, in, in some ways, because now we're taking that AUC value and we're, we're mapping it back to a standard deviation type metric. So, but it does still have fewer assumptions about the data. It assumes respective normality between the two distributions, but the distributions themselves don't actually have to be normal. They just have to have a, a shared transformation that will make them normal. Um, so AUC and V provide some, they're, they're uh, you know, helping to show sort of more what's going on because they're trying to take the full distribution into account, but they're still summary metrics nonetheless, and so they might, may miss some nuance, which you can get through the visualizations. So for the rest of this talk now, I'm going to be talking about the implementation of some of these ideas through the ESViz package, which I've been working on. So it's on GitHub. Um, it, I'm hoping to release the CRAN this summer, but we'll see. Um, and there's my GitHub link. So I'm going to go, I'm going to illustrate some of the functionality of the package using these example data. This is a pretty typical data set from education anyway, where you have SID, which is the student. Um, I have multiple cohorts of students here, whether they're special education or not, what their race ethnicity is. Um, and then whether they were eligible for free or reduced price lunch. And then ELL is whether they were an English language learner or not. Um, the season the test was given in, and then we have reading and math scores. So again, uh, because I work in educational research, a lot of the people that I work with um, actually don't use R like at all, like they have no experience with it at all. Uh, most of them are using SPSS and things like that. So one of my really goals when I started out writing this was to try to make it as accessible and as user friendly as possible. So I, I built it so that they all have this standard argument structure. So you have the function name, which has a bunch of different functions, but they all take the same sort of syntax. So there's, a for, there's this formula, which is the first argument, and that formula is gonna be the same regardless of the actual function. And then, then the data that you, you're requesting it from, and then there's op optional additional arguments for all of the different functions. So here's a quick example, those um, probability, probability plots I talked about before. You can produce that just by doing pp underscore plot. And then here I want to look at the differences between free and reduced price lunch students, those who are eligible and those who are not, on the math outcome. So the syntax is relatively brief, and you get this plot over here on the right by default. It is going to include that shading down below, and you get the AUC and the V annotated onto the plot um, with the reference line. But all of that stuff is, is modifiable. You can also use all of the standard base calls to um, change the main, t main title or the colors or whatever. All of the standard base syntax for plots work here. If you have more than one group, then it will just pick a reference group for you and pl plot different lines for all of the rest of the groups. Um, by default, the reference group is going to be the highest achieving group. So in this case, we're looking at white students and we have all of the other race ethnicities there. Um, and then I wanted to show an example here. I'm looking at English language learner differences. So um, in this data set, we have three groups of English language learners. We have students who were never English language learners, so they never received those type of services. We have students who were former or monitor status, so they, they received English language learner services for a while, but they've now been exited from the program. And then we have students who are actively receiving English language learner status. And so one of the things, if you look just here with Cohen's D, right, if you look at the bottom, you can see 
non-ELL students are actually scoring slightly below students who are monitored. So students who are never English language learners are actually on average scoring slightly below students who were former English language learners. So they were for a time and now they're not. And this was kind of surprising to me, but the difference is not that big, so I, this was prior to visualizing this stuff, so I, I wasn't that concerned about it. But the, the plot itself actually provides more nuance. So now you can see where that difference is occurring. So down on the bottom end of the distribution, you can see that's really where all of that effect is happening. On the upper end of the, the distribution here, you've actually got um, non-ELLs, so students who never uh, received English language learning services are actually performing higher than monitor status. But on the bottom end, so basically from the 50th percentile below, um, the monitor students are scoring higher. And again, this is why I think this is important and why I think uh, it's helpful because this can now lead to more theory to help, help develop um, you know, what's going on here. So basically what I think is going on here is you, when you've got kids that have really low achievement, providing them sort of any sort of service is going to be helpful, even if it's not directly related to the academics. So here's more examples. Now you can produce an empirical cumulative distribution function. It's, it's basically the exact same syntax. And a few additional arguments. You can add reference, sp uh, basically positions on the distribution. So these would be like cut scores on the state test. You can add horizontal reference lines if you want. This is getting a little busy on this one, but in, if you're maybe looking at just one cut score, it might be nicer. Um, and then the last one, this, this is supposed to look just like Cohen's D again, but now that, that D is, it has an I. So the pooled standard deviation is the exact same as it was before, but we're now calculating different mean differences for each group. And so you get a plot that looks like this for all the different race ethnicities. And I'm running out of time, so I'll go quick here, but you can change the quantiles. You can change the reference group. You, there's a dark theme. And then the part that I didn't talk about today, but um, is in the package, you can do all of those effect size visualization, or all of the estimation of all of those different effect sizes with the package too, so it's not just for visualization. Um, so that's pretty much my talk. The um, main future development that I'm trying to work on right now is I really would like to include measures of uncertainty in these plots, um, specifically with that bend effect size plot that I talked about there at the end. That's it. Thanks. Can you give us a use case for when you have used some of this data that you've produced? Sure, yeah, so um, this is, I mean, it might be more specific for me, but um, but yeah, basically like when we're looking at, we have a lot of statewide testing data, and so uh, the achievement gap sort of stuff we're really interested in, there's lots of policy stuff about that. So trying to look at how the achievement gap, is, like what the achievement gap is between different student groups, at, and then looking at it at different points in the scale, and then potentially over time too. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank our speaker once more.